Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be making a video talking about how to make a um, progress bar using CSS, HTML and JavaScript. So a subscriber in my Discord, which by the way, if you're not in my Discord, I have a link in the description. Check it out. We have more than 100 subs there, which are getting help every single day. We It is really nice and I would really appreciate if you guys could join it. But yeah, a, a, a subscriber in my Discord said, asked me how to, how to make a progress bar using GraphQL. And I thought it would be a great idea to actually just make a video talking about progress bars and also explain while well, like in most cases uh, when you would upload a, a file or make an API call, uh, you wouldn't actually depend on the data being sent. You would actually do it a bit differently. So today I'm just going to show you guys how to make this very simply using CSS, HTML and JavaScript. And at the end I'll explain how to do it in more complicated scenarios like the one I mentioned previously. So. You can see we have here a very simple uh, like server running my my computer it's on the local host 8000 i have this file over here which is very very simple the only thing it has is some html and i have two links um one for my css file over here which has nothing inside of it and i also have a script tag which i'll write all the javascript inside of here and currently i have nothing inside of my project however let's start building our progress bar right so to make a progress bar it is very simple you got to remember that you'll be using two main components you'll be you'll be using um, two divs one outside and the other one is an inner div and the one inside will be triggering an animation which will basically be filling up the whole div and that's the basic idea the, the whole idea behind the progress bar isn't that hard but we're gonna be making it so that we can click on, on buttons to trigger the animation that kind of stuff so in order to start making the progress bar, you can just come here and create a div. Um, let me just call it, I don't know, container. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, but container is usually what I call my, my like outer divs. And inside of it, let's just create another div, which is going to be the actual progress bar. So let's call it progress bar. Progress bar, okay. And that's basically it. This is literally all the HTML. We actually still want um, kind of like a button here. So let's create a button. And this will be something like upload. Just to upload, imagine we're trying to upload something, right? Let's check out to see how this looks. Obviously the, the two divs that I created won't be showing anything because we didn't give them any styles, but the button is over here and it doesn't do anything when we click on it. So now that we have this, let's start applying our CSS to our project because that's the main component of our progress bar. So the first thing we have to do is to actually create the container. The container will be very simple. We just need to add some like some fundamental like fundamental uh, aspects of it. For example, the height. Um, depending on your project, you might want to set this a little bit lower, a little bit like it depends on which kind of progress bar you want to have. I'm going to set it 20. 20 pixels just so you guys can clearly see what happens. Maybe I can increase it a bit, but that's basically it. And the background color is the background color of the of the like the, the bar before uh, it, it's filled up, right? So it's I like to make it a little bit like kind of a gray color. So I'm just gonna put CCC, which basically gives it a kind of a gray color as you can see. And let's I like giving it the, giving it a border radius, but for now I won't. I'll just show you how to do that later. But let's also just add some position and we have to make it equal to relative. So let's check it out to see how it looks right now. Um, obviously, <laughs> it just looks like this. It doesn't look perfect. Um, maybe I'll increase it a bit. Let me see. I'll make it 25. Let me refresh this. Yeah, it looks a little bit better now, but that, that's fine. Um, we're going to take a look at it. We're gonna, we can change it however we want later. But now we're going to start working in our in our actual progress bar. So the part inside of it. So to do that, we're going to access the container and the progress bar div that is inside of it. So progress bar. And inside of it, we have to determine some stuff. So if you've worked with this kind of uh, aspect that you you put something inside of each other uh, of another div, then you know that this probably should be position um, absolute. Why? Because um, because we have we have to make it so that it won't change inside of the and we can easily manage it inside of the outer div right so now that we have this we also need to set some aspects of it for example the height will be a hundred percent we don't want to we want the height to to cover the whole div right 
uh, and the the width we won't actually set the width right now because the width will be part of the animation and then we have to set a background color this is totally up to you um, I'm gonna set something let me I won't set this we have to make it different let me choose a color here um, I'm gonna choose honestly let me just choose this because I, I always like this kind of purple colors like this I don't know if that's gonna look good but that's fine and after this we just have to create our actual animation. If you're not familiar with CSS animations, then you can. Th this can be like a starting point because it is a very, very simple animation. Uh, CSS animations aren't that hard. If you guys want to see a video on that, uh, I can definitely make it. However, this will be a very simple animation, which means it's great for those who don't know animations yet. So to make an animation, you have to start with the keyframes tag and you later have to give a name to the animation. Let's just call it progress animation. And Instead of this animation, we have to set some aspect of the animation. And how we do this is actually we have to set the percentage of how our animation, like of our animation. So when our animation starts, it's going to be at 0% in, in, in our case specifically. And when it's at 0%, we want to set the width of our progress bar, which we haven't obviously added the animation yet to say that this relates to the progress bar, but it will later be done. So we have to say that whichever div or whichever element receives this animation, we want to say that when the animation starts at 0% of the animation, we want to set the width of that element to 0% as well. But then at 100%, we want to set the width to be equal to 100%. And why is this important? Because at 0%, then the progress bar will be 0% of the, like the, the parent component, the, the parent uh, div. But then at the end of the animation, it's going to be 100%, meaning it's going to fill up the whole uh, contain the whole div, right? And we can choose how long this is going to run. Let's come over here and just call the animation for now. So we can add an animation to an element like this by saying animation. And we can just say something like um, call the name of the animation, so progress animation, and give it some like time, which is how long we want the animation to run. I'm going to say four seconds. And we can also give it infinite. I'm not going to leave it at infinite later, but infinite just means it's going to keep looping through the animation. Actually, let me not call it infinite. I'll just call it forwards, which means that uh, basically when the animation ends, it's going to stay at the point where it ended, right? So we want to fill up the bar and keep it filled. So let's check to see if this is working. You'll see that the animation automatically starts and when it reaches 100%, it's going to stop. It's five, five seconds of animation and that's I think it looks great, right? So to add a border radius, as I mentioned before, you have to add a border radius for both this and this. And you'll see why. Because if I come over here and I just give a border radius here of like, I don't know, seven pixels. And I refresh this. You'll see that the outer one has a border radius, but the one being filled in doesn't. So it will remove the border radius when it reaches the end. So you just have to also add a border radius to this as well. So that it kind of, I like having border radius for almost everything if you've watched my videos, but especially for progress parts, because as you can see, it looks better, right? But now what do we have to do? Well, now we have to add some aspect so that it will only run the app, the animation when we click on the button, right? So how do we do this? Well, we, we're going to need some JavaScript. More importantly, we have to differentiate this animation. We only want to call this animation whenever we click on the button, right? So a, a quick way of doing this is actually imagining that there's another there's an ID called play animation. Right, there's this ID in some element, some element will have this ID, we want to say that whichever element has this ID, we want to set the animation to run like this. So initially, obviously, our element won't have the play animation ID currently, it doesn't right. But what we can do is we can add some JavaScript so that when we click on the button, we're going to set the progress bar to have an ID of play animation. So let's do this. To do this, we're going to come here inside of our script tag. Instead of here, we can just add normal JavaScript. And let's create a function called upload. So const upload is just a simple function, you can write it on the other format as well. But const upload, and instead of here, the first thing we have to do is we have to grab the progress bar. So progress bar is equal to, and we're going to use the document .query selector. Uh, document query selector. Basically, we're just gonna. This means that we're gonna grab the element that contains the class name of progress. Um, progress bar. 
my 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 keyboard is horrible but progress bar right um bar and after we actually grab this element what we want to do is um we, we basically just want to set an attribute to that element right so we grab we grab the progress bar and we want to set attribute and we can pass two arguments here the first argument is the attribute we want to set which is an id and the other one is the actual id that we want to set let's call it play animation right that's what we called in our css and now when we click on the button we can come over here and say um let me just click come over here and put an on click property or attribute and just say um upload so whenever you click on this button we want to call the function upload which exists over here so let's save this you'll see that it, it, it won't work in the beginning when we refresh our page it won't start playing but when i click on this button the animation starts playing which in my opinion looks cool and there's many like thousands of different things you can do with this you can put like the, the percentage uh, of the animation which can which can obviously be easily done since you already know how long the animation is going to take and you might be wondering well but this isn't how they do it they, they might have like they have to know a way of doing this based on how long it's going to take to for your api call to be done well no because there's no way to know how long it's going to be how long it's going to take for the api call to be done it, like technically it, it is impossible so what most people do is what, what most websites do is they create a very fast animation and they don't stop until the 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 api call is done and when the api call is done they, they don't just remove the animation they just play it super fast until the end so it seems like if you've seen an animation before with a progress bar you'll see that it reaches a point where it suddenly goes super fast that's because it already finished uploading and they're just finishing up the animation um, that's not super important in this case because if you realize that progress bars mostly are done in cases where you're uploading a file and with uploading a file you, if you're working with any backend or you're making an API call there's a you can grab the the form data and I'm not gonna create it right now but you can grab the form data and it has a, a property called on progress which can be easily accessible uh, when you're trying to create an upload bar and you can just set the percentage of the on progress as the uh, percentage of the animation and you can easily manipulate that uh, to whatever you want but this is the basic idea of a progress bar i think it looks cool i i honestly have been i've been doing web dev for a long time and i've never used a progress bar so um i think it just depends on certain situations and i find it really cool honestly i i probably should implement it uh, sometime right so i just decreased the height because i want to see how it looks if you Mm, yeah it looks okay I, I don't like the the border radius it's too small for this for this height but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the video please let me know down below what you want to see next uh leave a like because i'm posting every single day and i would really appreciate it um also join my discord as i mentioned before i i always take feedback from every single subscriber i read and answer every single comment and uh, if you have any any ideas of what videos you guys want to see I definitely will check it out. I'll definitely put it into my into my notes, into my, my notebook, and I'll just check it out and see what I can do. And yeah, subscribe, because it would really help grow my channel. And I see you guys next time.